I'm six foot three, 240, dating a girl who was half my size and would constantly strike me. Even my friends laughed about it. She ended up breaking my orbital bone, and nobody found that one funny. My sister-in-law smacks around her husband, and nobody sees anything wrong with it. The first time I saw her slap her husband, then boyfriend, across the face because she was upset with something he said, I was horrified. And no one else in the room even blinked. She hit my husband a lot too, and I had to tell my husband that that behavior wasn't acceptable. I wish people wouldn't be so blasé about women hitting men, or other women. It's just wrong. Full stop. Older women are insanely grabby and so harassy. I cannot count the number of times I'll go to take the order of a table of elder ladies and I'll have one of them grab my wrist, hand, or put a hand on my hip. It's, it's pretty gross. My older sister's friends would get drunk and come into my room and put on my underwear. They bragged about it to her friends at school. Also, when women call me gay for not hitting on them, I had a roommate bail, so I went rented his room to a photographer that I knew. She would bring over models and shoot fashion photography while I worked in the other room and played video games with friends. Sometimes she would want music, so I'd set up some speakers. One day in the middle of shooting, the photographer turned around and asked if I was gay, because I didn't hit on any of the models. I told her that they are working, and having a guy leer at them and hit on them would be inappropriate. And I assured them that if they were out of the social gathering, I would try and chat them up. It's just weird that they aren't constantly showered with attention from a guy they assume he's gay. Girls filming attractive stranger guys in public. Clearly the stranger doesn't know he's being filmed, or he looks like he knows and he's uncomfortable with it. It still gets posted online and left up as if it's not an obvious invasion of privacy. If it was the opposite, I'm sure it would be taken down. This happened to a buddy of mine. He was asked out by this girl in one of our classes who he barely knew and had basically never talked to. He politely declined and moved on, and I didn't think much about it. She continued to post on social media for months in a very explicit manner of how he missed out on her and how she's too good for him and how he was ghosting her. I brought it up with him and he said he didn't really care, so he let it go. But I was super pissed with her. Romantically accosting people over the internet is never cool. I've politely declined doing it and been struck and had homophobic slurs screamed at me. Some women don't handle rejection well. Many men don't either, so I'm not taking sides. No one should be attacked for not wanting to bang someone. Media stalking. Like stalking their ex, their crush's ex, the crush's ex's new significant other. And my girlfriend likes to keep me updated on my ex-girlfriend's ex's life. But why do I care? In college, a girl stalked me and did things like go to the men's bathroom just to look at me while I showered. Even though there were literal video footage, the university did literally nothing. And a lot of my male friends tell me that I'm lucky. Dude, I had a stalker that sent threatening letters to me. She was something like 102 pounds, but it was still scary and I don't think anyone took it seriously. I called the cops and they told me basically that I would never be able to get a restraining order and that I should just get a gun and shoot her if she came onto my property. This is the still the main reason I own a gun. Taking personal items from people as mementos. Testing their partner's friends by creating false situations or contrived situations to see how they react. Or to just manipulate them. Lying about sexual experiences. A woman actually tried this on a mate of mine. She pretended that he'd been cheating on him, so he was straight up like, Cool, get the f*** out, and please don't contact me again. She seemed to think that he would get jealous and try to fight for her. When she told him it was just to see how much he loved her, he still broke up with her. Cool, get the f*** out, and don't contact me again. I'm not dealing with that sh even more creepy, he got shit all over Facebook by her friends, too. They were messaging his friends, his family members, etc., saying what a terrible person he was, he couldn't commit to a real relationship, etc. Him breaking up with someone showing a notorious red flag introduced us all to a ton of other women that displayed a load of red flags. It was creepy as sin. Obsessing over celebrities. If I talked about the girls from Blackpink the way girls talk about male pop stars, I'd be called a simp or an incel. I agree, it, it would absolutely not fly for teenage boys to be crazy over female pop stars, but when teenage girls are obsessed to an unhealthy degree with boy bands, it's entirely normal. Calling someone to harass them for breaking up with their friend. I once broke up with a girl and her friends called to harass me, but I was such a nice guy that I, I just can't yell at you. When I saw who was calling, I'd answer with, Hey, are you calling because I broke up with Melinda? I understand. Feel free to yell at me. Nobody yelled at me. The last relationship I was in ended badly. One of our mutual friends decided to call the cops on me saying I was trying to off myself. Needless to say, the police take those calls very seriously. It was either voluntarily check myself into the hospital for at least a week or be sent to the state hospital for a minimum of a month. Spent a week at a hospital for mental evaluation. I've never been suicidal. The figure me out game. They intentionally communicate poorly because they want their partner to figure out what's going on. It's downright abusive. I was that partner years ago, and I'm still messed up because of it. If my fiance's having a bad day and talking less than usual, I have to restrain myself from anxiously trying to figure out what I might have done to cause that. 
I'm really sorry you went through that and now you have anxiety because of it. It's definitely a thing some girlfriends do. It's a messed up way to treat your partner and it also messes things up for the girlfriends who are actually straightforward communicators. I try my best to be straightforward in relationships because I don't, I don't want anything to be built upon lies. But more often than not, the guy that I'm dating assumes that I'm not telling the whole truth because the idea that women speak in code and they need to be solved like a Rubik's Cube. It's frustrating to say exactly what you mean and have someone always be suspicious that you're hiding the truth. It takes a lot for an attractive woman to be creepy. I remember this e-girl on Twitter did an experiment where she responded to the DMs with increasingly bizarre and at times scary statements and the men just kept going, unfazed. So I've had this very unique, long, curly red hair my whole life. Unfortunately for me, this meant a lot of old ladies liked it. I cannot count the number of old times an old lady went up to me and said, Oh, I can't help myself. Or something like that. And they just rubbed their hands through my hair without asking me. This happened since I could barely walk. It even happened when I was a toddler or a kid and I was extremely shy and I would hide behind my mom. What annoys me big time about this is if a guy ever did that to a four-year-old girl, they'd be called a p. Granted, now I'm 21, people don't do that anymore, but it still bugs me that it did happen. It hasn't happened to me, but I often see girls or women posting about how they flirt with someone that they have no interest in just because they're bored. I've seen huge pages on Facebook post something like, Ugh, I hate it when you, when you flirt with the guy when you're bored and then they start to like you. Playing with people like that is just messed up. I hate when waitresses touch me. Whenever I post this too, I get a torrent of replies saying that studies have proven that men are more likely to tip if a waitress touches them. I don't care. I don't want to be touched by you. When I was younger and a better looking guy, I had a lot of drunk middle-aged women grow and basically harassed me at bars despite no permission or reciprocation from me. Definitely one of those things that would have been a huge deal if genders were reversed, but okay, because I'm a guy, apparently. I once had a bartender for an older alumni guy's tailgate in college. It paid pretty well, so I was happy, but his wife came up with both hands, grabbed my ass in front of her husband and her own 16-year-old son. I have never been so uncomfortable in my life or felt so bad for a kid. I was dating this girl who ended up faking that she would do a surprise visit to my house while I lived very far away. She texted me that she'd be there in two minutes and was annoyed that I was annoyed that she'd show up unannounced while she wouldn't even know if I was home or not. I broke it off after she did it a couple of times again. She convinced a friend of mine to lure me to a bar where she was so she could win me back. Came to the bar, friend wasn't there, but the girl I ended things with and eventually blocked when things went too far was there, and she went as far as blocking my path to the exit, saying that if I left she would scream I was threatening her. I'm not saying it's all women, but I've had a few experiences like this and, well, yeah, the other experiences didn't go that far, but still. The number of you with long nails that are crusty underneath is alarmingly high. I even had a female co-worker who regularly kept her nails at three inches length who once commented on me cleaning under my nails and remarked inquisitively as to why she always sees men cleaning, and it didn't make any sense to her. I then glanced at hers and, well, I can only describe what I saw as an accumulation of dead skin and potato chip crumbs. Please, please clean under your nails. Flirting with boys, like children or even teens, as a joke or to make themselves uncomfortable because, oh, they look so cute when they blush like that. Cut that shit out. It's gross, and the fact that your goal is to make them uncomfortable is absolutely insane. That's p behavior. As a gay man, two things. Women wanting to be friends with us so that they can parade us around as their gay best friend. I had a few friends pull this shit on me, and the moment they started introducing me to their friends as, this is my gay friend that I was telling you about, I stopped talking to them. They try to turn me straight uh, also by doing things to attempt to seduce me. Like, what? I'm, I'm not interested. Also, the number of women who ask me for details on my intimate life and act like it's not awkward at all is insane. The manipulation of social media for their own interests. I'm not talking about editing photos. I'm talking about manipulating guys' feelings by posting certain things to make them mad, jealous, etc. I'm talking about stalking guys on Snapchat maps and finding the names of people there by scouring Instagram followers lists. The big one that really just weirds me out is how a lot of girls on some level view their Instagram and social media profiles as tools instead of a place to keep up to date with friends. Story 1. Genuinely fear for my safety. I went over and we got into an argument so I slept on the floor essentially. I went to the bathroom to text one of my buddies to come pick me up since I thought she had fallen asleep. Suddenly got a text from her saying, where are you? And my phone made a sound. I froze up and opened the bathroom door and she was already standing there waiting for me in the darkness. She didn't say a word at all, just stared at me until I walked by. So I went back to my spot on the floor and got under the blanket and pretended to be going to sleep until she did. After about 30 minutes I decided to peek out from under the covers and she was literally towering over me in total darkness with her eyes wide open the entire time. I got the F out of there so fast. 
Jesus Christ, it's like a sleep paralysis demon, but real. Story 2. I received a message that clearly wasn't meant for me. We just had our first date, which went really well. Calling me cheap and a slime ball, and how I'm on my last chance to make things right with her on our coming birthday with lots of presents. I replied, Hi, this is X. We just met and had one date. Was that message for someone else? She replied pretending to be her 12-year-old sister. Then apparently her dad messaged me about how he's told off his younger daughter. I'm out. F that. This one is hilarious. Should have said something like, What kind of a father shares accounts of their discipline with a guy who dated their daughter once? I need to speak with your mother. Please put her on immediately. And then see how big you can make the cast of family members supporting her attempt to get another date and a nice birthday present. Story 3. Married for 6 years. Started out thinking she just struggled with depression and anxiety sometimes. But things kept escalating. I walked away when she started threatening to stab me in my sleep. We had already tried several couples therapists and individual therapist, but she refused to consider medication. I called her to meet up and try to find some closure, but she cut me off telling me I wasn't allowed to leave her and as punishment, she was sleeping with two other guys. At that point, I just ignored her number and filed for divorce. Hope she's doing well, but glad to not be afraid for my life. Story 4. We had been together for quite a while, 6 to 8 months, and lived together for at least 2 months when I decided to make tuna salad. I asked how he liked it. He told me. I came back with two bowls. Half the can made his way, and half the can made the way I liked it. He completely freaked out. He said, if we can't agree on how to eat tuna, how will this ever work? I said that we don't have to agree. We can both have it exactly the way we want and be happy. He vehemently disagreed. I started thinking of all his other controlling behavior and inability to compromise. It wasn't that day that we broke up, but it was definitely the day our relationship broke. The cheating didn't help either. Story 5. It was already on the rocks from roughly around the time the millionth drunken argument happened. However, the moment that sealed it was when she said something along the lines of, If your dad wanted to be alive, he would still be here. My dad died in a car accident three years before that. Immediately went from loving her enough to make it work to thinking she was the most vilest person on earth. Story 6. My brother took a girl to a high-end sushi place and his date ordered three times the food as he did. He just got a grilled salmon. She ate almost none of it and at the end... She said she ordered all of the extras so she could take some home for tomorrow. When the waiter showed up for the bill, she excused herself to go to the bathroom. The waiter asked my brother if he wanted to split the check, and at that point, my brother did the right thing and stuck her with $100 worth of sushi and booze. The girl returned to see a huge check at her seat. The true hero was the waiter. He probably sensed what had happened and came to the rescue. Story 7. We went to the mall and stopped by this little kiosk selling cookies. I decided that I would get one cookie. The lady working there said if I buy two, I get one free. I decided to buy two and get the third one free. My date went off on this lady saying she was trying to scam me, etc, etc. He was legit yelling so loud that it was echoing through the mall. It was so embarrassing. If you're rude to people in customer service, you're not for me. Story 8. I was going through some stuff in my early 20s and was pretty desperate for any kind of affection, which is the only reason I took a couple of weeks to back out of this. The second time I ever met her, she told me to delete every girl's number from my phone, sister included. She then came over to my place, saw I had a full bookshelf, ridiculed me for being a reader, and in the same breath announced that she loved coke so much and wanted me to try it. Finally, I escaped, but by then she was already sleeping with two of my friends, who are obviously no longer my friends. The good news is... I've now been happily married for five years and consider myself so incredibly lucky. She ridiculed you for reading and then tried to get you to try coke in the same convo? This sounds like a really cheesy PSA. Ditch the book, Square. Here, try the super cool nose candy instead. Hilarious. Glad you didn't cave. Story 9. He didn't have a car, so I'd help him with rides to work. He worked the third shift at Toys R Us stocking shelves. I picked him up one night, and he was so drunk he could barely stand. I made some comments about how he isn't going to be able to work. He started throwing shiz at me in the parking lot. I threw his shiz on the ground and left him there. I've dealt with one too many alcoholics, and I wasn't wasting any more of my time. Cut to five years later, he is now sober and getting married this year. So good for him. Story 10. Showed up late at my place one night because she couldn't sleep at her place alone. I was fine with that until she started talking about the reason why. When she was alone, the demons in the corners and 
edges of the room would fill the dark spots and watch with their glowing eyes. Urged her continuously to get help, to go to the doctor, but she wouldn't do it. What she was seeing was real. I felt terrible leaving her for that, but I wasn't equipped to deal with someone who needed professional help and refused it. Story 11. I'm a black person. My best buddy in the whole wide world is a white person. We were roomies at one point. He brought a date over. I met her, nothing weird, but as it turned out, she had a problem with my bromeo living with a black person. Me. He immediately broke it off with her. I don't have many friends, but I like to think I got quality over quantity. It is sincerely heartwarming to see so many enjoy an anecdote of bromance triumphing over bigotry. This post just may be the leverage I need to convince my BFF to join Reddit. Thank you, everyone. Story 12. We weren't in a relationship, but I had a developing thing with a guy once. Until one day, when I wasn't around, he and some other friends of ours went to a bar and he sneakily slipped stronger alcohol into some of the other girls' drinks there. This girl apparently was talking a lot with one of our other friends and not showing much attention to him. So he got jealous and threw this friend on the floor and started to strangle him. He was obviously thrown out of the bar after that and later tried to play it off as just a joke and just messing around. How do you jokingly try to strangle someone? anyway. Anyway, I dropped this guy out of my life after I found out. I definitely wouldn't want to be stuck with someone like that. Story 13. I had a huge crush on her for a while, but never had the opportunity to talk to her given our weird work schedules. Then a friend from work set us up. I was elated. The first date goes really, really well, and we hit it off. We start spending as much time as we can around each other, talking on the phone every night, all the special things you do when you're starting a new relationship. Then she starts coming over more often unannounced. She would stay for a couple of nights, then a week, then two weeks. I would come home from work and she would be in my house, sometimes drunk. The thing was, she had almost been fired for an incident involving alcohol before and was lying to them about her sobriety. She would have few too many, then go off about her family or how I wasn't taking our two-month relationship seriously enough. The final straw dropped on Valentine's Day this year. She gets annihilated to the point of not being able to walk on her own. After I refuse her drunk advances, she flips out. What followed was a couple of hours of her threatening to drive home drunk, sitting outside so the cold weather would freeze her to death, laying in my bed and wailing my name till hoarse, and alternating between manic laughter and crying. Two days later, once she was sobered up, I told her to kick rocks. We dated for just around three months. Quickest turnaround ever for me in a relationship. Story 14. He wanted me to spend time only with him or my family. He checked my phone and wanted me to only have five chats. My mom, my dad, my sibling, and him. I could not talk, say hi, or hug my male friends, and eventually I was not allowed to have them. I wasn't allowed to meet my girlfriends either. At some point, he took my phone and unfollowed every male on my Instagram. He used to come to my place and stay there with me to avoid going out. I dreamt about traveling to Japan, but he said no because at that time, I really liked one Japanese actor and he was afraid I could meet him and fall for him. Toxic AF. I had the balls to break up only after two years of a relationship. He stalked me a couple of weeks after. Now I value myself more and would never let someone do something like this. Story 15. He went to England and came home with jewelry after our second date. Said he also bought engagement rings but threw those in the ocean. What? When I said I couldn't accept the gifts, he had a big breakdown on the couch, crying hysterically. I walked out of the apartment, made sure he didn't follow me, and then I ran all the way to the bus. He had been acting a bit strange a couple of times before, too. A few months later, I found this guy had been grooming young girls online for a while and ended up being prosecuted for around 50 cases of yeah. This happened 20 years ago in Sweden. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison for 56 cases. Story 16. Not like you're not pretty, but you would be so much more attractive if you look like insert my baby sister's name. To which I said, you mean my 15 years younger and a minor, 6 foot blonde and size 2? He said it in front of his friends and everything went dead silent. His best friend punched his arm and told him he was being a duck. I got up and walked out. His sister called later to apologize for him for being an a hole and told me his entire family was pissed at him. Worst part, he genuinely didn't think he did anything wrong. The frontal lobe went on full shutdown. Story 17. Was seeing this guy for a couple weeks, but hadn't met his two young kids yet because that was his choice. He tells me that he's fighting for his kids. The mom took them in a breakup, but doesn't really want them. He's living with his parents and doesn't have to do anything if she has the kids. So one night I'm over and he tells me the following. 
If we were to get serious, I'd move into his apartment. I'd take care of his kids and clean his apartment while he's at work, and he'd expect dinner to be ready when he gets home from work. He told me to think about it for a few days. He said if I couldn't do this, that we could be F buddies until he met someone else, then he would straight up cut me off. Why was he doing this? Because his kids need a mom and need stability. I hadn't even met his kids. I ended up telling him no, and I'm glad I did. Story 18. Was dating a guy for about a week in high school. I went on a class field trip for one of my classes, and we were going to be gone all day. The guy I was dating would always walk me to my classes, and so I told him a few days prior that I wasn't going to be at school the day of the field trip. Well, my field trip ends up ending early, and I managed to make it to my last class of the day. The guy I was dating was waiting outside of my classroom. He saw me and started crying because he thought I was avoiding or hiding from him all day. I reminded him about the field trip I had been mentioning for the past few days, and he refused to believe me because I was there for my last class. So yeah, we talked it out for a bit, and I had a very awkward and drawn out breakup with him after class that then drew into the following Monday. Story 19 I kept having to call the cops to calm down my wife after she became addicted to a slew of prescription drugs. I told her doctors that opiates for a ruptured vertebrae, stimulants for ADHD, Ambien most nights to help her sleep, and an assortment of other anxiety and depression and more to combat side effects made her violent. One of the times that I called the cops to calm the situation down during a bad episode just made me cry. All she had to say was that she had already been there and asked when it would stop. I thought I'd been holding things together reasonably well. I had an office job where no one knew what was up, though my work had suffered greatly. I kept clothes and food in my trunk just in case I had to stay out for a bit because she had decided I was part of the conspiracy. I had a gym on the way to work where I would shower and just have some downtime. I did all of our housework and errands because she couldn't work or do much of anything most of the time. Each time she cut herself, she told the hospital it was an accident and she always tried to go to a different one. We lived in a major metro between hospitals. The cops saw through it. Being seen like that and knowing that even that lifestyle was running out hurt. I'm now recovering from the divorce and enjoying the calm. I sometimes panic for no reason and I feel more comfortable with clothes and food stashed in a trunk, but I feel much healthier. I get more sleep. My blood pressure is normalized for the most part. I don't cry at work anymore. Story 20. Wouldn't call it a relationship as it was only three dates, but I met this girl at a wedding. She was a friend of a friend and we shared numbers that night. Texted for a while, then had a date. The first date was probably a big red flag, but I shrugged it off. We had connected on Facebook and she noticed she went to college with a girl I went to high school with. No big deal, until I found out she had been messaging that girl and asking her all these questions about me in high school. Who did I date? What car I drove? Etc. Anyway, the third date rolls around. I wasn't sure how long we would be together, so typically I wouldn't have taken her to a really nice restaurant so early in a relationship, but I was in the mood for steak, so I took her to a pretty high-end steakhouse. I have never been more embarrassed by someone's behavior in public in my life, and I have a 6- and 3-year-old at home now. She sent three martinis back because they weren't made correctly, while being extremely insulting and rude about it. She ordered a medium steak and then got pissed because she insisted she ordered medium rare. Both the waiter and I told her she had ordered medium. She was making comments about what other women in the restaurant were wearing, and not very subtly. Then despite me trying to get out of there without buying her dessert, she got a dessert menu and expected them to make her something that they didn't have on the menu. They had cheesecake and she wanted chocolate cheesecake. Another outburst at the staff. On the way out the door, she made a point to stop and complain to everyone loud enough other customers could hear. When we got into my car, I was so embarrassed I pretended I had left my credit card on the table so I can go back in. I gave the waiter an extra 20 and apologized, telling him I was dumping her as soon as I got to her place. He laughed and told me he wished he could see it. I didn't really give her a chance to say much. She called me a loser and stormed off. Haven't seen or heard from her since. Story 21 Met a girl on Tinder. We went for a coffee date. Shared some of the same music tastes. She lets me know that one of them is playing at a local club on Friday. I suggest we go together and have dinner before. Friday comes, we do a late sushi dinner and head to this club around 10 for the show. Headliner, who we wanted to see, went on around midnight. Finally get to the bar and order drinks, then head to the dance floor. She pounds the drink and says she is getting another drink. She comes back a few minutes later with a new drink, gives me a kiss on the cheek, and wanders off on the dance floor. I am not someone who is overly possessive and figure my wanting to be in the back to get a full visual and auditory experience is not her jam. All good. 20 minutes later, I see her grinding on some dude. Now mentally, I am already back in my car, but I want to see what happens when she makes eye contact with me.
with me. They start making out, and the guy notices me eyeballing them. She wanders off to get another drink, and he comes up to me asking if I have a problem. I explain the situation, and he says something to the extent of, Sucks bro, she is with me now. F off. Took his advice and did. Called up a friend and went to his house and played cat ten till two-ish. Then my phone rings. It's 2.30 a.m. and she is calling me asking where I went. My car was missing from the parking lot. I told her I went home and she was on her own to find a ride. I bet that guy you were making out with could give you a ride. To which she responded, which one? We kissed once, made out zero times. I laughed, hung up, and rolled for more bricks. Story 1, when he claims to have PTSD from Afghanistan, has nightmares so real he chokes you in his sleep, is violently racist towards anyone vaguely Middle Eastern looking, yet it turns out he never made it past week 2 of basic training. I feel sorry for my sister-in-law. Stolen Valor. I bought the same guy a drink at the bar a month apart because he was on his way to the Middle East or some shit. I'm not even a fan of the military. He was alone and I figured he could use a drink before leaving. Then, during the second one, I realized he should have already left according to his first story, and that he was now telling me he had to do boot camp in Iraq. I ordered two shots of Jameson, took both, and walked away. Story 2. Met a guy on an online dating website, had a few phone calls with him and things seemed good. Then he tells me he had a favorite pair of pants when he was in high school. He wore them every day, until they became too ragged to wear. Then he started wearing them under his normal pants. Every day still wearing them ten years later, under his pants. I noped the fuck out of there. Story 3. Spoke to him once on the phone. He was at a mutual friend's house on holiday. I said, hi, how are you? He made a high-pitched giggle and handed the phone back to my friend. She gave him my address. She and I exchanged packages in the mail. She was in Germany, I'm in Australia. And he started sending me letters and little gifts. I start getting calls from customs because he's apparently sending me jewelry without paying the right amount of tax on it. I tell them to send it back. On the one year anniversary of our phone conversation, he sends me a floral arrangement via Interflora that's as tall as me with 18 red and white roses. White for my youth and purity. Pfft. Red for blood and 18 because that was my age. He was a lot older. This is when I got the police involved. He continued to send me messages, that he loved me, forgave me for involving police, that he didn't mind that I had a boyfriend, who I was with before I even knew this nutter existed, because my boyfriend would understand that he and I were meant to be together, we were meant to be because we had the same blood type. He followed my favorite band around Europe, getting his photos taken with them in a t-shirt bearing my name along with their song lyrics. He said he knew where I lived and that he was coming to steal me away. Customs called me after intercepting more packages from him. They contained blood. The police blocked him from entry to the country, and I didn't think any more about it until about a year later. I was watching Border Patrol, and I saw him arriving at Sydney Airport and being detained by police before being deported. My heart froze. Story 4. My girlfriend's sister was dating a guy for about a month, and all of us thought he was a great guy until she let slip one evening that he had withdrawn $30,000 out of God knows where in the past four months to fuel his gambling habit. He is 18, and at university. She didn't seem to think this was a red flag, though. Story 5. I was once dating a guy who was a bit shy and very sweet, but lacked self-confidence. After four very fun dates, he suddenly became distant, seemed down, and we stopped dating. Cut to seven weeks later, I'm dating some other guy, after three dates, he suddenly asks out of nowhere, How does it feel that I won you over? Confused, I asked what he meant. He explained he took down, as he called it, the guy I was dating earlier by feeding him lies about me, just dating him out of pity, so that his self-confidence would be crushed and he would stop dating me. He said this as if he was proud of it and I should be impressed. He then claimed to have the right for his first time as a reward. No first times were had that evening. After the date with Mr. Douchebag, I went back to the guy I dated first. I told him I knew what happened, and we started dating again. Let's just say that this time a first time did happen a few days afterwards. We have been together for five and a half years now. Story 6. Refusal to take responsibility for anything that has ever gone wrong in their life. This includes failed relationships, failed classes, financial mismanagement, car accidents, work issues, etc. Admittedly, things just happen and some situations are out of our control. 
What is a red flag to me is a lifelong trend of this and no self-reflection. Story 7. I was with a bunch of friends at a bar getting drunk, and towards the end of the night, everyone left except for one of their friends I had just met that night. He ordered us another drink and I reluctantly stayed. Then he asked me to come back to his home, and I told him no. He asked over and over again, and then started saying, It's not like I'm going to rape you. He said this over and over, and I got the f*** out and left. I need to mention that he was the only guy at the bar wearing a salmon-colored Izod shirt. Story 8. When he wouldn't let me wear shorts because no one should be able to see that but me. Sadly, this didn't actually strike me as crazy or possessive until after the relationship ended. The only proper response to this is to look him straight in the eye and tell him, I like shorts! They're comfy and easy to wear! And then send out your rattata. Story 9. Save yourself a lot of pain and heartache. If he wakes up in the morning and starts drinking, then continues to drink all day, run far away and don't turn back. Living with an alcoholic is the worst f***ing nightmare that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. Story 10. Once I started talking to this new guy, I sent him a text saying I was going to go home and change and get my car and I would be over. And he flipped out saying, oh my god, if it's such a chore, then don't come out. Followed by, you're probably stalling to F your ex. And then some other statements. Side note, we have been talking a week and never once have any of these problems arisen. So yeah, a red flag that he is probably crazy. I didn't have my car because my cousin was driving, and the rest of the next hour or so was him sending me screenshots of our past conversations, explaining how I was the liar, and I said I'd come hang out. After, I told him that I didn't think we should hang out anymore. For obvious reasons, I'd like to stay alive. Story 11. First date. He's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. Rabbit runs across the road. He aims for it and misses it, and he is cursing himself out because he missed squishing the rabbit like road rage style cussing. My spidey sense goes off. I tell him that I don't like this, probably too loudly. He gives me the most cold lizard-eyed look and says, dumb animals don't have feelings, animals don't feel pain. I say, pull over the fucking car. Let me out now. He pulled over, but at first refused to let me leave. I inform him that this is the kind of that serial killers think as kids. Animals definitely feel pain, and this date is over. Eventually, he called me a psycho bitch and let me out of the car. I happily walked the mile and a half home. It was daylight, and I knew the walk well. My mom always told me to watch out for guys who got off on hurting animals, because they're the kind of guy to beat up their own kids. I just never thought I'd get the ultimate deal breaker less than 20 minutes into the date like that. Story 12. I was dating a guy who may fit this criteria. We'll call him Romero, because that's his name. We dated in high school briefly. He moved to Texas for three years. He moved back to New Jersey, for me. He says this. Once he moves to New Jersey, on the first day of his arrival, he asks me for a place to stay. I barely knew the guy anymore. He stays a week. I am still living with my mom. He won't leave. We, my entire family, politely ask him. He says it is because he is part of our family now. He sits down for dinner with us even when we ask him not to. He sleeps in my bed when I sleep out. I sleep at my current boyfriend's house every night. He just won't leave. I break and tell him if he doesn't leave, I'm calling the cops. By this point in time, my sister, nine years old, has called me three times complaining that he walks around the house naked. My brother tells me that he spends hours in my room smelling my shit. Not literally, you get it. He agrees to leave after professing how he wants to touch my body and how he loves me so. Okay, whatever. He's gone at least. Nope. I come home that night from a friend's house and he is there. Nobody invited him in. No one even knew he was in the house. He is eating food from the fridge and tells me he is part of our family now and you can't kick family out of the house. It's Christmas morning around 5 a.m. So my family is waking up. He asks where his presents are. I kicked him out again, forcefully, like push out of the door. Later that evening, I went over to my father's house. My dad was out of town, but he kept his keys in the mailbox for me. He is in there, sitting on the couch watching TV, like nothing is wrong. I tell him he broke into my dad's house and that I'm going to call the police. He threatens suicide. He follows me to Tennessee for a music festival, and after that, I don't hear from him. I don't know where he lives now. Eek. 
Story 13. If he gets into the school system and spends countless hours looking through student pictures to find your name just so he can add you on Skype, then he's probably crazy. Trust me. Oh, and if he finds your Facebook, becomes friends with your friends to get your phone number and messages you every few hours, you can bet he's crazy. They were two different people. Story 14. Was still living with my parents at the time and broke up with this guy. Went to my night class at college and came home to find him on my couch crying to my mom about how I broke his heart. The next week, he tried to break into my car when I was leaving work. Story 15. I usually lurk, but had to come out of hiding to share. I knew this guy, we'll call him Adam, in middle school, but we became friends around our freshman year. We had a few classes together and would hang out after school in groups with other mutual friends, including my boyfriend at the time. One day, out of the blue, I got a text from Adam. In this text, Adam confesses his love for me. We weren't that close as friends, never hung out alone. I don't believe I ever gave him a reason to think that I had those kinds of feelings for him. I tell him that while I am flattered, I don't have the same feelings. I try to let him down easily. Adam takes it hard. He avoided me in class and stopped hanging out with our friends. After a month or so, things go back to normal. This is where the red flags come up. I started getting flowers delivered to my house. They're from Adam. After the fourth delivery, I called the florist and asked him to stop having flowers sent to me. Then I get envelopes full of torn petals. One day, I come home and there is a box of roses on my bed. When I asked my dad if he brought them in my room for me, my dad told me he didn't. We check all the doors and windows and the latch on my window is broken. Adam broke into my house. We called the cops, but with no proof of it really being Adam, nothing was really done. My older brother takes it into his own hands and threatens Adam, and things cool down for a while. Now, seven years in a restraining order later, I still get flowers and letters sent to my parents' house occasionally, all sent anonymously, but we all know it's Adam. Story 16. Three out of four conversations with the guy, he's mentioning that his mom abandoned him when he was six. I suggest therapy, and he says he's over it. But when I reschedule a date, I get a three-page email from him about trust and abandonment. Yeah, you're all good, bro. Story 17. I was meeting someone for coffee from an online dating site, and I mentioned that he was the first guy I've ever met via an online dating website. He proceeded to ask me how many other dates I had planned for the rest of the day, how many messages I got per week, and how many visitors go to my page. Not a great start to online dating. Story 18. Oh, this is almost one third of my life story. I was engaged to someone two years older than me. I met him at 14 and thought he was perfect. Intermittently visited him until I was 18 and going to college. When he told me if I wanted to be with him, I needed to be near him moved to his city to go to school. We dated for two years, then spent almost a year engaged. Called it off about six months after my 21st, when a friend basically slapped some sense into me. In addition to what others have said, he made me feel like I was neglecting him and not being a good girlfriend or fiance by going to my college classes or work instead of spending time with him. I lost my scholarship at my university because my grades dropped when I started skipping for him. Even when we lived together, he would complain about not getting enough attention. It was like being engaged to a toddler, except he was already potty trained. I paid all the bills, and my parents helped me because I couldn't support us. He had a job as a server, but I never saw money. After we broke up, I learned he had gambling problems, and guy's night was code for casino. He used his mom to get out of everything. Obligations to volunteer work in a foreign country? Mom buys him a new plane ticket home because he sounds so sad. Join the Air Force and can't handle boot camp? Mom alters his medical records to make it look like he had trauma from a car accident and was never cleared. He was. Upset about me wanting two years to save up for a wedding and honeymoon? Mom takes me to dinner, where she spends four hours telling me I don't love her son enough, followed by an hour of begging me to marry him and give him a child and her grandkids. He was really good at manipulating emotions. He would lie or cheat or steal from me, and when I would get upset, he'd make it sound unintentional or as though he was doing it for us, or blame it on me for not giving enough love or attention or affection or sex, etc. Typical abusive significant other excuses. Basically, I was dumb and stupid, but I wouldn't trade those sh years for anything because they taught me so much about myself and what I want from life, and also what red flags and crazy looks and sounds and acts. 
Story 19. A guy I was casually dating was giving me a lift back to my car after a night hanging with some friends. I got a little turned around as it was an area I wasn't familiar with, and the one-way streets were throwing me off. After driving down two streets and not locating my car, he angrily pulled over and told me to just get out at 2 a.m. in the middle of downtown Los Angeles. Story 20. When I would go out with my friends and get a million, oh my god, I miss you, I'm so sad and lonely, I need you back here now, texts, and we lived together. I like some show of affection, but damn, that was smothering. Then, when we broke up, he left me a gift that was a painting of him staring at me while I was sleeping. Nope. Story 21. When guys talk about a future with me on first or second dates, it's happened several times now. I'll casually mention I want to move to New York City one day, and they'll frown and say, Ah, uh, but I don't want to. Can we move to X instead? Or talk about how cute our babies would be. Story 22. I had been chatting with a guy a couple of years back. We had set a date to see each other, but a week before, I politely canceled. Before I could even say, let's meet up the week after, he started screaming over the phone that he had expected me to bail and that he was so disappointed, but he could have known since I was so pretty, my personality must be terrible. He continued saying he saw a future with me, but now it was all ruined. After only two weeks of knowing this guy, I was pretty shocked and very glad he showed his true colors that fast. Big red flag. Story 23. When he started accusing me of having sex with my friends and wouldn't let me have anyone over when he wasn't at home. He calls me at home when he's out of town for work. Him. Who's there? Me. My friend and his friend who's dating my friend. Him. You're probably having a threesome. Me. Um, no, we were just hanging out. Him. Come on, I know you're having sex with them. Me. No, really, I'm not. Him. I don't want you having people over when I'm not there. The sad thing is, I thought sacrificing what I wanted for him was an indication of how deeply I loved him. Being raised with all this rubbish about unconditional love, there are basic conditions for how human beings should treat one another that everyone has the right to expect from their partner. Story 24 takes everything personally. Say, for instance, he invites you somewhere last minute and you decline because you're busy. Rather than, okay, no worries, rain check? It's, why? What are you doing? You're always too busy. You never want to see me. And other such whiny nonsense. Occasionally, it can be playful banter, but most of the time it's just annoying. Play it cool, guys. So I'm getting a lot of replies along the lines of, but you're always flaking, that's frustrating. I agree, but it was not my point. I'm talking about a guy I might be seeing regularly getting pouty or feigning offense if he invites me somewhere last minute, and I already have plans. Him saying, you're always too busy, is just hyperbole. Dudes, if a girl never makes any effort to see you, she's just not that into you. Sorry. Story 25. It should have been a big giant red flag when we would text and he would get so furious and call me terrible names and stuff, and then a few days later text me like none of it had happened. We only ever really texted, though we did see each other every once in a while, because I was away at school. But I was young, and now I see how much of a ridiculous red flag it was and how dangerous things could have gotten if we'd gotten into a more serious in-person relationship. Story 26. Just a good side point. If you're a guy and you catch one of your guy friends pulling some of this red flag borderline psycho shit, it's your responsibility to check that shit, confront your friend, and explain why it isn't okay. There's a huge gulf between rom-com cute pursuit and stalk slash possessive abuse, and it happens when we let it happen, and it starts stopping when we start stopping it. Physical abuse. I'm six foot three, 240, dating a girl who was half my size and would constantly strike me. Even my friends laughed about it. She ended up breaking my orbital bone, and nobody found that one funny. My sister-in-law smacks around her husband, and nobody sees anything wrong with it. The first time I saw her slap her husband, then boyfriend, across the face because she was upset with something he said, I was horrified. And no one else in the room even blinked. She hit my husband a lot too, and I had to tell my husband that that behavior wasn't acceptable. I wish people wouldn't be so blasé about women hitting men, or other women. It's just wrong. Full stop. Older women are insanely grabby and so harassy. I cannot count the number of times I'll go to take the order of a table of elder ladies and I'll have one of them grab my wrist, hand, or put a hand on my hip. It's, it's pretty gross. My older sister's friends would get drunk and come into my room and put on my underwear. They bragged about it to her friends at school. Also, when women call me gay for not hitting on them, I had a roommate bail, so I went rented his room to a photographer that I knew. She would bring over models and shoot fashion photography while I worked in the other room and played video games with friends. 
Sometimes she would want music, so I'd set up some speakers. One day in the middle of shooting, the photographer turned around and asked if I was gay, because I didn't hit on any of the models. I told her that they are working and having a guy leer at them and hit on them would be inappropriate. And I assured them that if they were out of the social gathering, I would try and chat them up. It's just weird that they aren't constantly showered with attention from a guy. They assume he's gay. Girls filming attractive stranger guys in public. Clearly the stranger doesn't know he's being filmed or he looks like he knows and he's uncomfortable with it. It still gets posted online and left up as if it's not an obvious invasion of privacy. If it was the opposite, I'm sure it would be taken down. This happened to a buddy of mine. He was asked out by this girl in one of our classes who he barely knew and had basically never talked to. He politely declined and moved on, and I didn't think much about it. She continued to post on social media for months in a very explicit manner of how he missed out on her and how she's too good for him and how he was ghosting her. I brought it up with him and he said he didn't really care, so he let it go. But I was super pissed with her. Romantically accosting people over the internet internet is never cool. I've politely declined doing it and been struck and had homophobic slurs screamed at me. Some women don't handle rejection well. Many men don't either, so I'm not taking sides. No one should be attacked for not wanting to bang someone. Media stalking. Like stalking their ex, their crush's ex, the crush's ex's new significant other. And my girlfriend likes to keep me updated on my ex-girlfriend's ex's life. But why do I care? In college, a girl stalked me and did things like go to the men's bathroom just to look at me while I showered. Even though there were literal video footage, the university did literally nothing. And a lot of my male friends tell me that I'm lucky. Dude, I had a stalker that sent threatening letters to me. She was something like 102 pounds, but it was still scary and I don't think anyone took it seriously. I called the cops and they told me basically that I would never be able to get a restraining order and that I should just get a gun and shoot her if she came onto my property. This is the still the main reason I own a gun. Taking personal items from people as mementos. Testing their partner's friends by creating false situations or contrived situations to see how they react. Or to just manipulate them. Lying about sexual experiences. A woman actually tried this on a mate of mine. She pretended that he'd been cheating on him, so he was straight up like, Cool, get the f*** out and please don't contact me again. She seemed to think that he would get jealous and try to fight for her. When she told him it was just to see how much he loved her, he still broke up with her. Cool, get the f*** out and don't contact me again. I'm not dealing with that sh even more creepy, he got shit all over Facebook by her friends, too. They were messaging his friends, his family members, etc., saying what a terrible person he was, he couldn't commit to a real relationship, etc. Him breaking up with someone showing a notorious red flag introduced us all to a ton of other women that displayed a load of red flags. It was creepy as sin. Obsessing over celebrities. If I talked about the girls from Blackpink the way girls talk about male pop stars, I'd be called a simp or an incel. I agree, it, it would absolutely not fly for teenage boys to be crazy over female pop stars, but when teenage girls are obsessed to an unhealthy degree with boy bands, it's entirely normal. Calling someone to harass them for breaking up with their friend. I once broke up with a girl and her friends called to harass me, but I was such a nice guy that I, I just can't yell at you. When I saw who was calling, I'd answer with, Hey, are you calling because I broke up with Melinda? I understand. Feel free to yell at me. Nobody yelled at me. The last relationship I was in ended badly. One of our mutual friends decided to call the cops on me saying I was trying to off myself. Needless to say, the police take those calls very seriously. It was either voluntarily check myself into the hospital for at least a week or be sent to the state hospital for a minimum of a month. Spent a week at a hospital for mental evaluation. I've never been suicidal. The figure me out game. They intentionally communicate poorly because they want their partner to figure out what's going on. It's downright abusive. I was that partner years ago, and I'm, I'm still messed up because of it. If my fiance's having a bad day and talking less than usual, I have to restrain myself from anxiously trying to figure out what I might have done to cause that. I'm really sorry you went through that, and now you have anxiety because of it. It's definitely a thing some girlfriends do. It's a messed up way to treat your partner, and it also messes things up with the girlfriends who are actually straightforward communicators. I try my best to be straightforward in relationships because I don't, I don't want anything to be built upon lies. But more often than not, the guy that I'm dating assumes that I'm not telling the whole truth because the idea that women speak in code and the need to be solved like a Rubik's Cube. It's frustrating to say exactly what you mean and have someone always be suspicious that you're hiding the truth. It takes a lot for an attractive woman to be creepy. I remember this e-girl on Twitter did an experiment where she responded to DMs with increasingly bizarre and at times scary statements and the men just kept going, unfazed. So I've had this very unique, long, curly red hair my whole life. Unfortunately for me, this meant a lot of old ladies liked it. I cannot count the number of old times an old lady went up to me and said, Oh, I can't help myself. Or well, something like that. And they just rubbed their hands through my hair without asking me. This happened since I could barely walk. It even happened when I was a toddler or a kid and I was extremely shy and I would hide behind my mom. What annoys me big time about this is if a guy ever did that to a four-year-old girl, they'd be called a pe. Granted, now I'm 21, people don't do that anymore, but... 
Still bugs me that it did happen. Hasn't happened to me, but I often see girls or women posting about how they flirt with someone that they have no interest in just because they're bored. I've seen huge pages on Facebook post something like, Ugh, I hate it when you, when you flirt with the guy when you're bored and then they start to like you. Playing with people like that is just messed up. I hate when waitresses touch me. Whenever I post this too, I get a torrent of replies saying that studies have proven that men are more likely to tip if a waitress touches them. I don't care. I don't want to be touched by you. When I was younger and a better looking guy, I had a lot of drunk middle-aged women grow and basically harass me at bars despite no permission or reciprocation from me. Definitely one of those things that would have been a huge deal if genders were reversed, but okay, because I'm a guy, apparently. I once had a bartender for an older alumni guy's tailgate in college. It paid pretty well, so I was happy, but his wife came up with both hands, grabbed my ass in front of her husband and her own 16-year-old son. I have never been so uncomfortable in my life or felt so bad for a kid. I was dating this girl who ended up faking that she would do a surprise visit to my house while I lived very far away. She texted me that she'd be there in two minutes and was annoyed that I was annoyed that she'd show up unannounced while she wouldn't even know if I was home or not. I broke it off after she did it a couple of times again. She convinced a friend of mine to lure me to a bar where she was so she could win me back. Came to the bar, friend wasn't there, but the girl I ended things with and eventually blocked when things went too far was there, and she went as far as blocking my path to the exit, saying that if I left she would scream I was threatening her. I'm not saying it's all women, but I've had a few experiences like this and, well, yeah, the other experiences didn't go that far, but still. The number of you with long nails that are crusty underneath is alarmingly high. I even had a female co-worker who regularly kept her nails at three inches length who once commented on me cleaning under my nails and remarked inquisitively as to why she always sees men cleaning, and it didn't make any sense to her. I then glanced at hers and, well, I can only describe what I saw as an accumulation of dead skin and potato chip crumbs. Please, please clean under your nails. Flirting with boys, like children or even teens, as a joke or to make themselves uncomfortable because, oh, they look so cute when they blush like that. Cut that shit out. It's gross, and the fact that your goal is to make them uncomfortable is absolutely insane. That's p behavior. As a gay man, two things. Women wanting to be friends with us so that they can parade us around as their gay best friend. I had a few friends pull this shit on me, and the moment they started introducing me to their friends as, this is my gay friend that I was telling you about, I stopped talking to them. They try to turn me straight, uh, also, by doing things to attempt to seduce me. Like, what? I'm, I'm not interested. Also, the number of women who ask me for details on my intimate life and act like it's not awkward at all is insane. The manipulation of social media for their own interests. I'm not talking about editing photos, I'm talking about manipulating guys' feelings by posting certain things to make them mad, jealous, etc. I'm talking about stalking guys on Snapchat maps and finding the names of people there by scouring Instagram followers lists. The big one that really just weirds me out is how a lot of girls on some level view their Instagram and social media profiles as tools instead of a place to keep up to date with friends. A few weeks ago, I sat on a train and this gorgeous woman sat down opposite of me. Two stops later, a lot of people get on the train and people have to stand at this point. And she actively makes sure her purse is taking up the entire seat next to her. Instantly, the ugliest woman on the train for me. <laughs> have some respect. Expressing how shallow you are. Someone I was attracted to said something like, my future husband will have a lake house and a boat. One of her friends responded with, or maybe you can find the right person and then pursue that dream together. And she was just like, nah. Flirting with every guy. If you're trying to make me jealous slash think that you could have any guy at any time, congrats. It worked. I'm out. <laughs> This obviously goes for both girls and guys, but when they focus primarily on themselves during a conversation. I was talking to a girl a few months ago, and it eventually just kind of hit me how much she was talking about herself, or would steer conversations towards herself and her problems. A girl I used to be close with would go off on one, start arguments, and say the most spiteful, hurtful things imaginable. If you had an argument with her, she and everyone else would expect you to apologize. But they all just accepted it, that she would never face up to her actions or apologize because, hmm, that's just who she is. In my mind, you shouldn't be able to get away with being rude and not owning up to it just because you have a reputation for being rude. Unfortunately, she was one of those attractive girls who was always supported by an array of friends. And can't think of any other word to describe them as simps. I doubt that she ever had any situation where she had to be alone or cope with having nobody, because there's always people clambering over one another for her attention, in spite of her rude attitude. Not sure how to phrase this, but I dated a girl years ago. She was gorgeous, but that was the extent of her talents. She knew nothing about the outside world. It was so difficult to talk about stuff with her. I don't want to say intelligence because she wasn't dumb, she just didn't care enough to know about world events. 
You couldn't debate with her or talk with her about stuff in depth. Asking what's happening in a movie or show that I haven't seen either while playing on a phone. Then rinse repeat a few more times for good measure. This is the actual worst. I, I refuse to watch movies with my girlfriend when because she does this the entire time. Then gets offended when I call her on it. If she litters. I had a girl throw a bag of trash out my passenger window while I was taking her home. She called me a tree hugger when I called her out on it. Talking about an ex or constantly asking about yours. I never talk about an ex, especially in a negative manner. My answer is always, we decided to move on and ended the relationship respectfully. If someone trusted you enough to let you in that close then talking shit is a stab in the back no matter how that relationship might have ended. Secondly, I, I can't stand people who flake or are clearly playing games. We're not in high school. I'm not going to chase after you. Leaving someone on red and not responding to a question for days at a time? Instant turnoff. Life happens, but it's clear when it's done on purpose. I just delete the number and I don't bother. Thinking you can dictate what I can and can't do. Had an ex that tried to tell me how long I could be on my game, when I had to be home after visiting friends. Shit's wild. Girls who use zodiac signs as an excuse for their behavior. Like, no, Chelsea, nobody gives a fuck that you're a Sagittarius. Maybe you're just a bitch. Needing to seek attention for validation. Be confident and comfortable in your own skin. It's difficult at times and probably impossible to be all the time, but you don't need to validate your worthiness by way of seeking attention from anyone that's going to give it to you. I think being negative is such a turnoff. I like a girl that can be like, Damn, that situation sucked. But I learned from it, and I grew. As opposed to being pitiful and spiteful, even just in everyday things. Being rude to people that don't deserve it, or people who do. Go ahead and be angry, but don't be cruel. Also, being picky. I hate that stuff. Sweet girls with a good outlook on life and a funny sense of humor is where it's at. Straight up. Looking like an Oompa Loompa with a fake tan, also plastic surgery to make their lips puffy. I'd really rather throw my lad into a blender. When they hate things. They hate their job, they hate their body, or their friends, but you suggest making a change and now you're the villain. Underrated answer. Guys that are like this are annoying as f too. I am over 50. It's rare that women under the age of 30 are attractive to me now. They look so young, and the things that they're interested in I haven't even heard of. As has been said, at some point I stopped looking at the daughters and started being interested in moms. I guess it's possible someday I'll be interested in grandmas? I had a female coworker once tell me, unprompted, that she wouldn't be interested in me because I'm too short. I told her that was fine because I wasn't looking, and she was far too skinny for me. I was immediately called a body-shaming a-hole, thinking you, as a straight guy, want to have sex with them just because they're female. You could be very attractive, but no, I don't want to do it with some rando. I would rather build an emotional connection first. It's not alien to them, but when I've rejected women before, it's usually met with, Oh, I didn't know you were gay. Or, I didn't know you had a girlfriend. Unfortunately, usually after they've grabbed my D without consent. No, dude. Just keep your pervy hands to yourself, you creep. Largely the same things that make men unattractive. Don't have your shit together and not actively trying? You're not taking any care of yourself? Bad attitude? Toxic traits? No level of maturity or self-awareness? Not emotionally invested or willing to be vulnerable with others? Sure, attractiveness can mask a lot of these, but... There comes a point when they, they become too obvious and damaging for the people around them. Beyond this, it is subjective. Adding to this, pulling people into that spot in your life but acting like it's nothing when the time comes for them to be vulnerable or invested. Hard to put it all into words, but I guess the best way to explain it would just simply be approachability. I know it's vague, but if I get a weird vibe from someone that just makes it uncomfortable to be around them or even for basic conversation, then I don't care about anything else. Pointless to proceed. Some people give off really positive and friendly vibes that make you want to be around them and spend time with them. Some of them give you the impression that they want nothing to do with you. If she has no sense of direction in life or a depth of character that's very, very unattractive. A personality beyond what's on Netflix and the current buzz on Twitter is what I find attractive. A lot of girls are missing depth and character. A lot of guys, too. People in general, honestly. People nowadays lack depth, or they're, they're too insecure that they hide their depths and passion. I say we all run widely towards who we are in our hearts, and not towards what the masses and or apps are screaming that we should be. Discover yourself and your direction in life, and don't be afraid to be the good that you are. Have and protect some morals and values. Spend less time on social apps and more time reading, checking in on your loved ones, giving to the less fortunate, maybe learning a new skill and nerding out over it. But just... Stop updating your story every 20 minutes. Escape the attention economy. Believing in something higher and looking past society is helpful. Take accountability for your reality. Love passionately and stand up for good in the world. They don't have their own hobbies. 
complains but doesn't move towards self-improvement, living off their parents' dime while asking them for things. Asking their parents for a new laptop but spending money on a vacation in the same year. Can't take care of themselves. Using too much social media like Facebook and Instagram for superficial reasons. When their go-to fun place is a bar or a club. What's wrong with clubs? Clubs are fun. Knew a gorgeous girl in college. I'm talking like 10 out of 10 physical traits. Who absolutely refused to take compliments. No matter how good she looked, she'd always just disagree with you and talk about how ugly she was. Got to the point very quickly where I just stopped trying to convince her and I let it be. This isn't anyone's fault because it's their genetics and my personal preference, but a little girl's voice. For whatever reason, women who have really high-pitched voices or sound like they're permanently stuck in baby talk voice just completely turns me off. Also, a woman once told me, I'm not that deep in response to me asking her what she thought about the themes in a movie that we watched. Oh, I instantly lost all attraction. Being psychotic? This one girl stole my friend's sweatshirt and violated his personal space, and when I went to grab it back for him, mainly because he was working on a school-related thing, she said, What are you gonna do? Hit me? I walked away before I got my life ruined. I later found out that she did this to get back at me. Prosecutors are more, uh, sympathetic towards women in that regard, and I didn't want that in my life. She also convinced everyone I liked her when I wasn't at all interested. My mom said I broke her heart. My friends, beside my three closest friends, bring her up constantly. Women who abuse their control are horrific. Men who abuse their control are horrific. Abusing control should be a red flag in general. Bad hygiene and bad manners. Like someone who doesn't wipe their mouth when they eat. Instant turn off. Bad smell or unkempt hair. Not salon perfect, but just lack of washing or brushing. Instant turn off. Dirty clothes. Instant turn off. Bad breath. Instant turn off. It just shows that for someone at my life stage, you lack basic self-care skills when you really shouldn't. Another one is a lack of basic self-management skills. You broke all the time due to overspending? Turn off. Can't keep a job? Turn off. Etc. All for the same reason. You just lack the basic skills that you should have at my life stage. Just got out of a relationship a month or so ago, so I can say that these are some red flags. Arguing with her parents for no reason at all while I'm over there. Taking forever to respond when confronted. She says, oh, I've been busy, even though she's on her phone all day. Texting other people while leaving you on open slash delivered. Also texting other guys, even though you've said how it makes you uncomfortable. Constantly leaving you on open. And when confronted, she says, sorry, I forgot. Even though I was pinned on messages and snap and all that. Lack of respect for boundaries. Canceling plans last minute, multiple times a week. Any kind of manipulation and or abuse. Whether it be emotional, physical, whatever. As for people who, you know, or you're looking into maybe trying to have a relationship with, lack of care for others. Too much care for others. Lack of respect towards things I think are important, i.e. don't litter, lack of hygiene, etc. Yeah, if they're interested, they'll give you attention. Or should. Girls who have a quarter inch of makeup on their faces. Less is more. I understand it's heavily tied to self-confidence for many women, but I promise you, we will notice that you look like Mimi before we notice your skin has imperfections on it. I feel like the male equivalent is a comb over trying to convince people that you have hair. Everyone just embraces who you are. We're all beautiful in different ways. Being confident with who you are and being yourself and not presenting a mask is what is going to gain you friends. Partners to last a lifetime. Being mean to me. Women seem to think that being mean to guys outright makes them want to pursue them or something. I've watched a bunch of buddies get straight up sh** on time, on time again, for, on Tinder for simple starters like, Hello, I'm really glad my girlfriend and I started off by nerding about cats when we met each other. Saying that being fat is healthy. I believe that you should try to get rid of the fat through working out. It's fine to be fat as long as you don't try and brainwash others into thinking that you're healthy when you're obese. I'm looking at you, TikTok. And also not practicing self-care. I'll go the other way. Took a girl out for a date. Soon after I met her, and for the first time we dressed up, I was college poor, and I had a manual car with no reverse. I usually find a space I can pull through, but it was crowded, and I did. I forgot that and walked her to my car, and she was in a nice dress and heels. Embarrassed, I told her to hang on while I pushed it out without being asked, and without missing a beat, she said to get in and steer, and we would, she would push it out. I wanted to marry her right then and there, and a couple of years later, I did.